Dear listeners, welcome to the University of Pannonia podcast channel, focusing on today the sub-project of climate change effects on economic and business life. Climate change is the defining issue of our time and at the same time one of the biggest challenges of sustainable development. Hungary is gradually transitioning to a low-carbon economy on a path that takes the aspects of economic competitiveness and growth, the creation of social welfare and fight against poverty as well as climate protection into account. The sub-project Effects of Climate Change on Economic and Business Life examines the social and economic effects of climate change from specific aspects such as local economic development and food waste, the level of corporate CSR activities, individual consumption such as lifestyle, attitude and the issue of responsible marketing. The sub-project places the indicators measured in Hungary in the EU27 context. Today's podcast will focus on the hybrid grass system and the connection of sustainability. Joining us today as our guest is Nico Saris, inventor and patent holder of Power Grass System from Milan, who is responsible for development of the holes we are going to present. My name is Esther Nemeth, an assistant research fellow of uh, University of Pannonia, Faculty of Business and Economics. Thank you, Mr. Saris, for accepting our invitation. Thank you, Esther, for inviting me and uh, hello, guys. So, as my first question, I would like to ask what motivated you to develop this product? That's a good question, yes, Esther. Um, I believe that it was uh, 2011 when uh, we, have, uh, we were building a lot of uh, sport fields and artificial grass, grass by, the, by that time. By the way, I'm an agronomist, so building a gamut artificial grass by that time was seems to be an oxymoron, but uh, not something good. But uh, the market was looking for that because uh, there was too many hours of play on, on grass, on the footballs and uh, football pitches, and the whole market was going in that direction. So by 2011, we realized that the limits of the artificial grass. Uh, and then uh, we understand that uh, something new, something more natural uh, was necessary to be uh, introduced. The, uh, that uh, was also the, 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 the some, some of our competitors, basically you get the ideas also sometimes from the competitors, they were promoting, uh, uh, to my opinion, not that it was such a good idea, which is organic infill on the artificial grass and, uh, instead of the rubber, rubber cramp, which was normally is being used then and also still now. That was successful for uh, three years, but basically we realized that it was the, the, the cost of the maintenance and the refill and of the reintroduction of this organic infill in the synthetic grass was too much expensive. And the benefits of, let's say, of low maintenance costs and everything to be, uh, let's say, sustainable was not uh, that uh, easy to do because we were too much higher the, the, the expenses for the maintenance, basically. So I said to my partners then, say, if it has to be something natural, it has to be grass inside the artificial. So everybody thinks I'm still crazy now because I'm promoting this idea. But at the very end, uh, we realized that uh, the, the system now it works very well. We have done a lot of research on that and a lot of experience. And uh, we see that uh, we are now we have the best system in the planet. Thank you very much for your answers. And uh, secondly, what causes of climate change does this technology address? That's another issue which is very, very important. Uh, that's something we tell more or less to any uh, of our potential customers because basically it is a system which has been uh, seen at 360 degrees. You know, uh, from uh, the, the sustainability point of view, we have to understand, uh, we have to, let's say, to, to, to satisfy three pillars of the sustainability, which is the economic point of view, the, uh, let's say, the, the environmental point of view, and also the third pillar, which is the, the social point of view. No? So I believe this system can introduce, let's say, sustainability quite easily in each small community because uh, uh, the economic point of view is when you, you manage to build up the pitch to do a amortization plan and the maintenance plan, let's say, over 20, 30 years. And when this, at the very end, you have uh, an average cost which is lower than everybody else, then you are, you are okay. So you have satisfied the first pillar. 
The second pillar is the um, environmental issue. We have worked also this uh, quite enough. And we realized, because also maybe some uh, hint I had uh, two years ago, maybe from, from Hungarian company, it's a uh, company uh, Beresh, you know if you know that, Beresh Drops, and uh, we realized the, the how important was that, uh, let's say, of these drops, to, to, of these uh, micronutrients, let's say, not the drops, but the micronutrients which is inside, on to benefit, let's say, of the human health, but also on the plant health and so on. So we combine that with the regenerative agriculture, which is part of the sustainable plan of the European Union now, which uh, can, is coming now from the United States since 14, 15 years. We realized that it's possible to have a biological, let's say, cultivation and improve and increase the production. That means that you can uh, uh, feed your grass or, your, or another culture, let's say, with a natural way and make sure you don't reduce your production. That's, that's the fear of the, of, the, of the producers, of the farmers, that if I do it, uh, let's say, naturally, then I lose my production. But this is not true. You get much better production and you don't have to use chemicals. Mm -hmm. So this, of course, uh, uh, let's say, technique of uh, uh, regenerative ag agriculture is, is, uh, is, um, is uh, how you call it, a new way of approaching, let's say, agriculture itself. So we tested that, let's say, in 2020, in, uh, in, uh, in one big pitch we had with the European, let's say, uh, under 21 uh, uh, championship. And we see that the result was much, much, much better. We had the agronomists coming there, visiting the pitch, say, how you can manage that? Because we have 14 pitches we have to replace, and your pitch has nothing to do with that. We have to, you, you, can, you don't have to do anything with that. Yes, because we realize that uh, with this system, with this way of feeding the plants, you get uh, strength, resilience, and resistance to any environmental, let's say, problem. Uh, at the same time, you, by increasing the cell production, you, you capture more CO2. No? Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, you capture more uh, pollutants, I mean the dust from the, the surface and so on, from the, from the air. And uh, at the same time, you don't have to do a lot of work to replace, to redo, to remake the pitch and so on. This is, you, you cut a lot of work, a lot of, let's say, uh, doing and redoing, let's say, the work again and again, you know, uh, build up the pitch and then destroy it and then do it again. And you know, every natural pitch has this cycle very quickly, which is very, uh, how we told it, uh, it's not good for the environment anyway, because any work you do is a little bit in, is impacting somehow. So the only way to impact positively, positively in a positive way in the, in the environment is this one. So the third pillar was a little bit social life. Maybe I'm going to be a bit too long, but I think it's important to understand the third pillar of the sustainability, which is the, the social part. The social part is uh, how to teach uh, young people, let's say in the local communities, to manage a pitch in an environmental way. That you create, let's say, people who get knowledge, people which have to uh, develop a critical thought about how to, do, how to manage this knowledge, and what to do with uh, their pitch. And this knowledge can be expanded, let's say, on the rest of the territory to any culture. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, let's say, if I teach you a way to do something new and in, order, in a new way, an innovative way, and so on, you become a very important person in your local, let's say, community. So this, for me, is the most important, uh, uh, how you call it, thing you can provide to a new guy who is learning something. Thank you very much. How do traditional sport fields and power grass sport fields affect climate change? Okay, traditional, let's say, traditional power sport fields, we should, uh, we should uh, divide in um, two types, the natural grass, the artificial grass, and the hybrid grass, okay? So if we talk about natural grass, we know that natural grass pitches, even if you make them very good and you do very good maintenance, they are um, very, very expensive to maintain. And of course, you can do very little hours of play per week. For instance, normally we say you can play and train in, in a natural grass pitch up to six to eight hours a week, maybe 10 if you are very, have good climate and of course you are satisfied with that. But after that, then the expenses, let's say compared to the hours of play are, are very, very high. Then that's why people moved 20 years ago to the artificial grass. The artificial grass is the extreme opposite. You can play as much as you want, basically. 
and uh, you have low cost of maintenance and so on. But you have what we call in Italy the extraordinary maintenance, which is that uh, you have to replace every 10 years the pitch. Okay? And uh, so you have very low cost of ordinary maintenance for regular maintenance, but you have the, every 10 years you have to replace the pitch. So this is not good for sustainability because we have to create waste and you have to, to go take it to the public dump. The hybrid system is uh, combining the, most, the, the benefits of both of them. You can play football, let's say, on natural grass because 97, 98% is natural grass. But at the same time, you can play what we say up to 25, 30 hours per week, you know, which is normally the real need of the football teams. Most of the football teams, they don't play more than that. But it's very seldom you have a, somebody with a request that you play more than 30 hours because there is also a problem of timing. You know? You have to use the pitch in the afternoon, four hours, maybe five hours, that's enough. In the morning you have to go to school or you have to work, you have to do something else. So what we realize is that you can play football naturals, which is much better, and you can keep the cost low, let's say yes, almost like an artificial pitch of the regular maintenance, and at the same time you can, uh, let's say, avoid to replace the pitch every 20 or 30 years even. Mm -hmm. Because the pitch, you have a longer period of, uh, let's say, of amortization. So if I create a waste that, uh, that I have to replace every 10 years, then somehow I reduce this waste because we, re we reduce the plastic material. But at the same time, I can, uh, let's say, um, delete this waste in 20 or 30 years. Okay? So this is, you can understand the balance. You can make the maths. Yes. <laughs> it's quite yes, easy. Yes. And you can see how this impact in a positive way. At the same time, we realized that natural grass grows better in the power grass than the natural. That was crazy or surprise also ourselves. Because we say, oh my God, it's growing better inside the carpet. <laughs> yes. So we realize, understand something more what is happening in the, let's say, in the natural grass, in the, in the natural, in the habit, let's say, in the habitat of the of the power grass uh, that was not ha happening on the on the natural grass and then the the, 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 the answer is that is resilience is the is the right que the right answer because uh, we we see that the grass has much more resilience because the the temperature because the humidity and everything like this is more stable mm -hmm. so that's what we learn by experience <laughs> that's that's why I said uh, at the very end everything is good but if you have to learn also by experience Thank you very much. And what factors are affecting climate change? What factors are affecting of the system, you mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What factors of the system are affecting climate change? So, uh, I would say CO2 is much more captured because we have much more rich and uh, continuous, let's say, growth on the, on the plant. So the plant is going to, to capture more, uh, let's say, um, uh, CO2 and other pollutants as well, of course, like any plant. At the same time, we believe that because of we use of the maintenance of the uh, regenerative agricultural technique, then what we do there, we do a combination of, let's say, the plant growth and the biological, let's say, activity in the, with the roots. You know, the, the basic of our, uh, regenerative agriculture is based on this, means it's based on the relation between uh, rhizobacteria, mycorrhiza, and, uh, and the roots together. And this combination is, is exists since uh, the, the planet Earth is living. <laughs> so uh, without that, we have no life, let's say, in the planet. So this combination is like a way to, 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 to help a little bit to, uh, to, to the plants to go over through some stress that we do because of playing hard on the, on, on the on play. But we have to, balance, to maintain this balance, let's say, quite easily. And this power grass helps that because uh, what we say the biggest limit on sports, on sports tours, is the compaction, soil compaction. So if we have this carpet which is reducing a very lot the soil compaction, then also our eyes, our, our um, roots and our, let's say, rhizobacteria and, uh, and the mycorrhizae, they will stay much happier and much healthier, let's say, in the roots uh, system below the carpet. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. It sounds really interesting. Another thing, if you want to, to add something, is about water, because we're just watching the water. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, and how can you measure whether this technology is having a positive impact? How can you measure that? This is such a good challenge. I think we need to do some research on that, uh, because uh, we have done some uh, 
some studies. And I think it is, um, it is important to measure that. And we have an idea, but uh, it should be, let's say, big, uh, be a part of, um, of, uh, of, uh, of a product of, of the um, of research, which is to be very, very uh, big and insightful. Because uh, we know that uh, we get more CO2, we know to get better, let's say, organic, let's say, co co cooperation between the bacteria, as I told you before, and the, and the roots. We know that we save water because we see also this and uh, we know that uh, let's say that uh, there are uh, many other uh, things involved and uh, we reduce for instance the temperature because we uh, we return back let's say by the cooling effect of the, of the grass you have to you reduce the temperature of the atmosphere especially if you are in the city and that's also very important but of course we need to find methods and, and instruments to measure that in a dynamic way we say you know, a dynamic way is uh, because so far there are some um, methods and, and, and possibility to do some estimations, but they are based on statistics, you know, on the data. Mm -hmm. I think the, the challenge in the future, and it's not only in Powerless, but also in any other activity, is to collect, uh, let's say, data and to see how this data change day by day. So that's why you to have it done the, uh, dynamically. By the way, it's something we do also with our financial, let's say, reports in the in the company. So we, you have to do it dynamically because otherwise you don't understand what's happening. If you see year after year, it takes too much long time. But if you see with, uh, day by day, then you can do it. There are some uh, laboratories, like for instance in the Netherlands, which they, you can do some testing and uh, allow that because when I need to do some testing to, do, to, to see to understand uh, the health of the grass, I can do it right away and understand if the grass is healthy or is missing something. It's like you're doing your blood test, you know, you take the sap analysis and you do that easily. And, but of course you have to create a system which also can measure also the CO2, which is something which I'm not sure there is something uh, really good uh, to, to test and uh, because I believe uh, to measure it, it has to be also easy, not only it has to be not too much complicated because everybody has to be, uh, let's say, with a little investment of time and money, maybe can be able to do these measurements and to show, look, we have these measurements and so on. That's why uh, the, the goal is to get to the point that we get some real green credits mm -hmm. and that will be a, and also another driver for our economy. So we return back from environmental, social and the economy. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I have one last question. How does it manifest itself and help the transition to a circular economy? That's very easy. That's a very good <laughs> question. Uh, but very easy for us because we have done it a lot of times. Uh, there are several things you have to do it uh, to be circular. Uh -huh. And as I told you before, it's not just to, uh, let's say, to circularize, uh, to, to make, uh, to, to recycle the product. The circular product is one little thing. The most important thing, to my opinion, to be a circular economy, the circular economy is to reduce the waste. If you reduce the waste and you can put it longer, then you are in the circular economy. The uh, second thing uh, is, of course, to try to see what to do with the, the waste you, you create, for instance. And then we realize that it's possible to reuse the pitch. Mm -hmm. For instance, if after 30 years, we are fed up with, let's say, with the pitch wall, there is a little bit of damage and we want to have a new one then we can replace that after 30 years, but of course we won't waste it. We, we want to make something good for, uh, let's say, another area or kindergarten, for instance, for kids, you know, or for, or let's say, pathways from the streets, you know, when there are some slopes and you have to, to maintain the stability of the grass and the, and the soil erosion, so yes. you, you can use it. So the re reusing the system is something which is much easier, much better than any other uh, situation. And uh, the other thing I think is that uh, you have to uh, uh, make sure that uh, the, the circularity of the, of, the, of, of the economy is uh, helping you to create, let's say, additional value in the local community. Mm -hmm. One of the little, little things that we are trying to do is also to try to um, make uh, it easy for people to feed the grass with what they already have on, uh, on in place. For instance, compost, for instance. Mm -hmm instead of chemical fertilizers. Uh, as I told you before, the agriculture, uh, regenerative agriculture is uh, teaching people how to, to use, uh, how to do what they have and how they can 
recycle the, 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 the nutrients, which is easy because in, in, in Hungary, for example, you have everything. I mean, you have the farms, you have the, the cows, you have the animals, you have all this kind of stuff. Why buy fertilizer? Yeah. So, and why use chemicals if you do it correctly and you have a, an immune system of the plants, which is much, much better. So, thank you very much, Mr. Saris, for coming and sharing this innovative idea. And uh, dear listeners, we have come to the end of our show. Thank you for joining us on today's podcast. And for those who would like to uh, get more information about this product, please visit the following link.